Welcome back to Northwest Elite Spirit, the channel you come to to train your mind, body, and spirit. I'm Coach Brian. If you haven't hit that subscribe button subscribe. yet, do that now and make sure to ring the notification bell to stay up to date on all of my newest releases. This is Become Limitless from Encounters with the Nagual, Conversations with Carlos Castaneda by Armando Torres from the chapter Movements of the Assemblage Point. On one occasion, Carlos was talking to a small group of friends and he explained that another effect of the movement of the assemblage point is that the things we perceive acquire new forms. The clarity of appearances gives way to a deeper and more essential clarity and living beings adopt the form of enormous round fields of light. Carlos said that the luminous configuration of a man or woman is a portrait of their existence. Seers look at each detail, and in that way they determine whether a person is prepared for apprenticeship or not. Carlos said, most people mistreat their tonal. In consequence, their fibers fall like the pleats of an old curtain. Those tired fibers work as a kind of glue, blocking the natural course of energy. Don Juan called these individuals tonal bells because they are shaped like bells. They are dark and give the impression of a heavy weight. When moving, those fields slither or give brief jumps as if they are dragging something or as if the person has put on a bear suit that is too big for him. In warriors, on the other hand, the energetic pleats have tension. Their cocoons are almost spherical and they overflow with vigor. The lower part is compact like a solid rubber ball and it bounces, lifting off from the ground. When warriors advance, their globes do not slither sorely, but rather jump with joy and sometimes drift across the plains over long distances. Don Juan called them precisely that, the planers, and said it was a pleasure to bump into one of them on the street. But only seers are able to redesign their luminosity in such a way that they can take completely off from the earth and fly. Those seers are able to break their limits, which is perceived as if they have ruptured the skin which had imprisoned their energy exposing the radiant central core. They are traveling sorcerers and they do not depend anymore on their physical body to be aware or to act. The task of an apprentice is to recenter his energy body through acts of impeccability and force that lead to the movement of the assemblage point. Above all, an apprentice should achieve mobility for his energy and make it flow in a natural way. Then his fibers stretch out and begin to shine with an amber shade. Perception takes place in a point of intense white light that is generally rigidly fixed inside a very specific area, which sorcerers call the human band. That point aligns emanations we receive from the outside with those which are found inside our luminous field, similar to the way an antenna picks up radio waves and transforms them into sound. To our surprise, Carlos assured us that to see that point is a relatively simple matter which happens in the early stages of adopting the warrior's path. He said, to see the assemblage point, it is sufficient to suggest to oneself in an appropriate way. An apprentice should never say, I am useless, I do not see anything. Rather, say the opposite, 
I might see it. Yes, there it is. If we repeat our intent to see it over and over, sooner or later, the assemblage point will enter into our perceptive field, and that is the first step towards moving in deliberately. One person in the group asked Carlos how we could witness our own perception. He explained that since we have no way of perceiving anything if it does not pass through the assemblage point, the only way of understanding this matter is to say that the point perceives itself. Whatever we see is the result of the assemblage point's operation. Because of that, we have the sensation of a flame burning where our, our emanations join with those from the outside. Carlos said that we might equally well describe the phenomenon in auditory terms or as an electric crack that signals alignment. He continued saying, the important thing is to verify it for yourselves because that will put you beyond the mind. It will fill you with silent knowledge. The mere act of seeing the assemblage point has an impact which moves the fixation of it. Carlos explained that an experienced sorcerer is able to displace his attention very far from the human band. This enlarges the reach of his perception considerably. He said, some sorcerers go on a trip to the realm of inorganic beings. That alignment is very gratifying for his energy and the traveler returns home renewed. Others have an inclination to go to the lower area, the area of the beast, the most sordid corner of awareness. For human beings, that is a dangerous place because to remain there for a long period can produce physical lesions. Someone asked Carlos where the self stays while the assemblage point moves to the low area. He answered, It seems you are thinking that the assemblage point fits inside your inventory of reasonable things, but that is not the case. Do not see it as a solid object or as another part of your body. We do not have an assemblage point. We are it. While a warrior is imprisoned within the limits of the human form, the furthest place he can transfer his assemblage point is to an area of interpretive vacuum, which new seers call limbo. That is a real place on the frontier of the other world, a transition area on the periphery of the other attention. These movements accumulate and serve to condense our personal power until they finally crystallize in a kind of luminous matrix that Don Juan called the dreaming positions. Through exploration of those positions, the individual experience of a sorcerer leaves the human groove and becomes practically limitless. The movement of the assemblage point is not just propelled by an interest in assessing astonishing visions, but is above all directed by the fact that each controlled displacement liberates enormous quantities of energy. Ideally, the warrior applies his unbending intent and lights up his energy field as if he becomes one gigantic assemblage point intending to witness everything once and for all. In that case, the point shoots out and up. The traveler becomes a blast of light and he never recovers his form again. This is the greatest challenge, the union of our awareness with infinity.